right, we're going to continue on reading our article on page 9 under Back to School, which is above the Zatari Refugee Camp sidebar. This past fall, Dania heard from a neighbor that a school for refugees was opening in a car. It was thrilling news. The school's a one-story building with a small yard and eight classrooms. 200 students are enrolled there. In October, Dania became one of them. Every day, a minibus takes Dania to her new school. It's a 10-minute drive along isolated mountainous roads, far too dangerous and cold to walk. At school, Dania is learning math, French, Arabic, English, singing, and music. She also gets refreshments like bananas, juice, and croissants. I'm seeing solutions here, but I didn't really see a problem in this section. You could argue the problem is in the last section and that there's a solution in this subheading section. So I think that's how the author organized that. Sometimes the subheadings can be connected because there was the big challenge and then there was back to school. So that was kind of the first one. Subheading was our problem and now it's our solution. Now we are on page 10. We're going to skip the Zatari refugee camp sidebar because it would just be too confusing. It is information about refugees, but it's a totally different style of refugee living. It's like a big refugee camp. So we're just going to continue on on page 10. Since returning to school, Donnie has been working hard. Because she's been out of the classroom so, for so long, she was placed in second grade. But she doesn't mind. She's in an accelerated learning program that could help her catch up. There's kind of a cause and effect um, with she's been out of school for so long, the effect she's placed in second grade, or problem solution. She's been out of school for so long, and now they're giving her an accelerated learning program. Or you could say this is a description of the things that the school provides them with. Here we go. Schools like Dania don't just provide an education. They give aid workers a way to connect with families and meet individual needs. For Dania's family, Save the Children provided a weather kit to help insulate their garage from the cold and the wind and a job program to help Donnie's dad earn an income. Counseling services are also provided to help traumatized children like Donia cope with their experiences in the war and the bleak realities of life as a refugee. We're now going to read our last subheading section of the article, Looking Ahead, and you're going to have a job to do at the end of this. So Looking Ahead. In June 2014, the UNHCR reported that the number of refugees worldwide had surpassed or gone beyond 50 million, the most since World War II. These men, women, and children are scattered across dozens of countries. Their living conditions vary widely. Some live in well-organized camps that resemble cities. Others barely subsist in informal settlements that can be grim, overcrowded, and crime-ridden. All face the risks of outbreak and dangerous diseases like influenza, pneumonia, chloria, and dysentery. And yes, of course, recently COVID. It is easy to be daunted by the number of refugees. Yet, as aid workers know, each refugee is a human being, not a number. And small triumphs are happening every day. For Dania, being in school again has a profound impact on her life. She has a safe place to go each day and a sense of normalcy. The longing for home is always there, of course, even if home is a distant reality. The war in Syria could continue for years, so now life must go on as best as it can. At press time, Dania had recently found out that a missile destroyed her family's house in Syria. Her father promises that he will build a new house one day and plant a new mulberry tree just for her. In spite of everything she's been through, Dania holds on to her dreams for the future. She's made a new friend, another Syrian girl named Nadine. They sit together each day, studying, reading, and learning. With pride, Dania says she intends to become a doctor when she grows up. I will wear a nice white outfit and have a stethoscope around my neck, she says. I won't take any money from the poor and will treat them for free. I love the clincher or ending that this author has chosen, a quote. Um, we're going to see here how in nonfiction writing, leads at the beginning to grab a reader's attention and clinchers at the end to really leave the reader with a lasting thought are a strategy that they use as well, not just in your fiction readings. So if you remember, go back to the top of looking ahead and I want you to take paragraph one and two 
and tell me what is the text structure of paragraph one and two. And you're going to fill that out under classwork. Um, and you can reread this as many times as you want and refer to the text structure sheet. Um, but I want to see if you can figure out what the text structure is for paragraphs one and two in the section looking ahead. I will be back Monday. I miss you all so much. We will finish reading our sidebar, do a couple more activities with this, and then we're going to be looking at book groups soon. So that will be exciting. Miss you.